Hello, everyone, and welcome to this third webinar on Vibration 9 Beta Program, which today is dedicated to the launch of the BPA platform. I am Roberto Acerbis, the CEO of Vibratio, and here with me there is Michela Frigerio, our Head of Training and Customer Support. During the webinar, Michela will take care of showing us the new BPA platform by realizing from scratch a fully functional digital process with its customized user interface using, obviously, the Vibratio low-code method. This will also be the opportunity to show some of the recent improvements that we have released from the beginning of the beta program uh, in, uh, in December last year. Uh, during the demo, uh, you're welcome. If you can, if you post uh, your question using the dedicated question and answer too, uh, we will try to answer after the demo or offline via email if we don't have enough time. So it's time to give the floor to Michaela for the demo, which will take about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, see you later. Hi, everyone. Today, we are going to see how to design a web application that automates a business process. Let's get started by creating the BPMN project that will contain all the business processes that we want to automate. In our case, we will automate a simple business pro process, which is the contracts management. The first thing that we have to do is to design the flow of the business process and to identify which are the actors involved in, in the process. In our example, we have the customer and the back office. Each actor is represented in the diagram by this horizontal section where we are going to design all the activities that uh, will be accomplished by the specific actor. Now let's design the flow of the process, starting with the event that triggers the process itself, which is the request of an offer by the customer. Then our business process requires the back office to prepare an offer. And so we design here an activity, which is a user activity. The flow of the process is represented by these arrows here. After that, our process will execute an automatic activity, which is able to generate the contract. And this is represented by a service task. After that, we are going to ask the customer to review the contract that has been generated and to decide whether he wants to, to accept the contract or not. In this case, the process, depending on the, the customer choice, will take two different paths. And so we have to design uh, a decision point here, which is represented by this object uh, that is named the gateway. I'm using an exclusive gateway right now, which basically means that the process can take only one on, of the flows that I'm going to design uh, from the gateway itself. So we have two different cases. The first one uh, reaches the end of the process and will be followed when the customer uh, refuses the contract. Otherwise, we uh, will ask the customer to sign the contract, and that's why we are modeling another user activity. After that, the process will end. So let's reach the same end event. Once we have designed the flow of the process, we can also add which are the information managed by the process. And so we can create some parameters. In our example, we have the product code, which is uh, chosen by the customer, the offer number, which is produced by the back office. Then we have the contract number, which is generated by the uh, system activity. And then we have uh, a Boolean parameter, 
which uh, contains uh, the decision uh, of the customer about accepting or not the contract. Once we have designed this information, we can also distribute this information among all the activities to state which are the information that each actor must uh, complete in order to uh, finish the activity. Let's state, for example, that for the prepare offer activity, the back office will see the product code and will uh, create an offer number. The system activity, the service task, will use the offer produced by the back office to create a new contract. The review contract activity will allow the user to see the contract and to decide whether to accept it or not. The sign contract activity will let the user see the contract and then uh, we will uh, um, let him write down a signature. Now let's specify which are uh, the options that enables the different paths that we have here. Let's state that when the um, user decides to, re to refuse the contract, we want to reach the end of the process. So let's write an expression which is accepted false. In the other case, we are going to reach the sign contract activity. So let's state that the expression here that must be true is that the accepted parameter is true. Now we have completed the design of our process. In order to get uh, a process that can be really executed, we need to set another couple of things. First of all, we have to design which is the business logic executed by this service task. And this can be uh, designed using uh, a sequence uh, of operation, an operation chain, that can be uh, added inside an action definition. So I created here uh, a sample one that we are going to customize later. Then the business process engine requires to have also a data source uh, where it can create all the data structure required by the engine to uh, be fully functional. So let's configure here a database connection. I'm writing also username and password and let's try to connect to this database to see whether the information are correct. Now, let me uh, add one more thing, which is uh, that the fact that this project requires a dependency, which is uh, the customer's data service project. This project contains uh, the management uh, of the customers and of the uh, contracts, but also all the authentication services that uh, must be used by the um, business process in order to authenticate the users and authorize them to execute the business processes. Now the BPM project is complete. Let's see how we can add to an existing uh, application uh, the uh, business process automation. So let's use at this purpose this contracts uh, uh, project that we have created in a previous webinar. To add the uh, business process automation, I can use a synchronization feature, which let me uh, select which are the processes that I want to automate. And then it proposed me a set of changes that it wants, it wants to, to uh, apply on my project uh, in order to get all the model uh, that will let me really execute the business process. Let's select the option that let me have a dashboard uh, with the to-do list activity for each actor involved in the process. Confirming the operation, I get uh, a project with a new uh, model pieces uh, that let me execute the business process. To get a fully functional application, let me adjust the login procedure so that uh, each actor can reach the dedicated dashboard once he logged in in the application. And after that, what we can do, 
is to generate the project and execute the business process. And I will use at this purpose the generate and run uh, option. This option basically generates uh, the current project, which is a, a web project and will, get, will let me get a web application, but also it generates uh, all the other projects that are set as dependency. So I will get also the application managing the uh, contracts and the customers, uh, and also the application that uh, executes the business processes. Uh, in our case, uh, the contracts management process. Moreover, for each actor involved in the process, I get a set, uh, one uh, uh, test user uh, so that I can impersonate the actor and execute the process. Then I will get the application container start uh, up and running, and uh, I will have uh, uh, the browser showing me the home page of the application. In the meanwhile, let's see which is the model generated uh, by the synchronization. We get here two web views, one for each actor, a dashboard page containing the list of the activities that, that must be accomplished by the specific actor, and a section that shows the status of the active processes, where I can look at the status of a process uh, seeing the diagram of the process itself. Then, for each user activity that we modeled in the business process, we get an hybrid module definition which propose a page where the user can fill in some information and then decide whether to complete the activity or not. Now, let's uh, execute the business process from the web application. As you can see, I get uh, three tabs here, one for each project that has been generated. I have the tab for the BPM project, which is the set of API necessary to execute the business processes, the tab for the data service project, giving me the APIs for managing contracts and customers, and then the web application. Now let's execute the business process, logging in as customer, which is the actor that can start the business process. I will reach the dedicated dashboard and I can press the start request offer button to start the process. I get a feedback message here, but I can also see the process in the dedicated section where I can have a look also at the business process diagram. And as you can see, this process is waiting for a back office user to uh, take in charge the prepare offer activity. So to proceed the execution, we have to log out and log in as back office. I will get to another dashboard, which is dedicated to the back office, where there is a prepare offer activity. And when I press the work on button, I'm assigning the activity to myself. And then I can write down here some information, the one required by the business process. And then I can decide what I want to do with this activity. I can decide to cancel the operation, which means basically to give the activity back uh, to all back office users. I can save the work I've done and come back later to complete the, to complete the activity. Or I can end uh, the activity right now. In this case, the process will uh, go on and that's why there is a confirmation dialogue here. The user comes back to his dashboard because the next activity is in charge of the customer. So let's log out and log in again as customer. As you see here, there is a review contract activity where the customer can decide whether to accept or not the contract. If we, we assume to accept the, the, the contract and we complete the activity, we'll be re redirected automatically to the next activity, which is the sign of the contract, uh, since it is the next activity once uh, the contract has been accepted. So if I decide to end this activity as well, the process comes to an end. Now let's see how we can customize the model created by the synchronization 
to get a web application that is more realistic. Let's start by customizing the uh, customer dashboard. What I want to do here is to propose to the customer a list where he can see uh, the available products and where he can select the products for which he wants to get an offer. So let me select the product object here and also some information to be seen in the page and in order for the list. Then let's say that the uh, product selected from the, the customer but must be uh, used for starting the process. So let me pass this information to the action that uh, starts the process, which can contain a business logic. And as you can see right now, it's empty. So let's add here a logic, which basically creates a request uh, using an existing service uh, in the data service project. And this action will uh, use the product code. And in case uh, of success, it will produce an offer number, which we can bind to the parameters on this port, which is the object that really triggers the starting of the process. If there's an error, uh, we are not going to start the process. Now, to complete the model, let's take care about the presentation using the dedicated editor. What we want to do here is to add in this page at the top of the uh, user activity list a table represented by this data grid widget where the user can see the product list. So let's state that the rows of this table uh, is the number of rows of the product and the columns of this table is uh, the list of attributes that I want to see for the products. I can also decide to reorder the information as I wish. And let's remember to put also here next to each product the event that uh, lets us really start the process. And with this setting, we customized the user dashboard. Now let's see how we can customize also uh, the user task module. Let's start from the prepare offer activity. And what we want to do here is to add some other information of the offer in this form. Uh, in, in particular, we want to see the product description, the product name, the product price, the discount, and the new total amount. Let's also uh, set that all these fields must be read only, except for the discount, which is the only field where the user can really fill in some information. Let's also state that the information shown by the form are the ones belonging to the offer managed by the business process. And now let's design what happens when the user decides to leave this page. What we want to do is to save the changes that it does to the offers using a dedicated service, which is the save offer. we want to execute this business logic in two different cases. When the user decides to save the work and come back it later to complete it, but also when the user decides to complete the activity. So we will pass to this action here, the information written in the form, and we will save the offer number uh, for the business process. Let's also add here another business logic, which is the one that let me get the new total amount once a discount has been applied. I will use an existing service at this purpose, and I also need an event to trigger the business logic. This action requires to have the product code and the discount as information and will get me 
back the total amount, which uh, I will use to show the total, uh, the total amount in the total field. Now, let's take care about the presentation of this page. Here we have a list of location, one for each uh, field that we have designed, and we can select the, the dedicated widget for one of these location, and then the editor is able to uh, decide using an automatic set of rules which are the widgets for all other fields. I can then decide to reorder the fields as I wish, and also I can configure the discount field to state that when the user fills in a discount, then the uh, logic about the new total amount must be executed. Now, let's see how we can customize the other two activities. Let's start by the review contract activity. Here, what we want to do is to let the user see the contract that has been produced by the business process. And in particular, we want to see the PDF document that has been produced. And let's also state that the contract to be shown here is the one that is managed by the business process. Now, let's take care about the graphic. And in this case, it's very simple. Since we want to add to, it, to the existing card here, uh, the chance to see, in addition to all the fields, the file about the contract. I can reorder the information also in this case, putting the file at the top. And that's it. Now, let's see the last activity we have here, which is the sign of the contract. Let's do the same operation we did before. So let's add the contract details, selecting the contracts object and the uh, PDF file. Let's specify also in this case that the contract to be shown is the one managed by the business process. But let's also add here a new field, which is the field where the user can draw the signature that will be applied to the contract. This field must be set as a blob field since the signature will be uh, treated as an image. Now, let's add the business logic that really executes the sign of the contract. Let's use an existing business logic as this purpose. And let's, see, let's state that this logic is executed only when the user decides to complete the activity. This logic requires the contract number and the signature and it will change the PDF document applying the signature to it. Let's take care about the graphic also in this case. And here what we want to do is to add in the location dedicated to the signature field, the signature widget that will allow the user to draw the signature. And let's also add a new information in the card, which is the file of the contract, as we did in the other activity. Let's reorder the information. And now we completed the customization of the web project. What we want to do now to see the changes is to generate the project. In the meanwhile, let's uh, change the business logic uh, created uh, in the BPM project. Uh, what we want to do is to change 
the sample logic we have here, which is the logic uh, executed by the service task for generating the contract, and use an existing service for really creating uh, a contract document starting from an offer. So we will pass here the offer number, and we will get, in case of success, a contract number. And in this case, the service task will end successfully. Otherwise, we will reach uh, the port uh, representing the error option. And also in this case, to see the changes, we have to generate the project. Now, we have to wait some moments uh, that the um, procedure ends and also that the container reloads uh, the application. But then what we can do is to reload the web application and navigate it as we did before, looking at the new pages that we have designed. So let's log in as customer. We reach the dedicated dashboard with the, with the product list. Let's select a product to start the process. And now let's log out and log in as back office. You see here there is a prepare offer activity. I take in charge this activity and you can see the page that we have designed where there is all the information about the product chosen by the customer. I can write down here a discount, and you can see here that the business logic for getting the new total is executed, and then I can complete the activity. Now, in background, the service task has been executed, and we can see the results by uh, logging out and logging in as customer again. We see here the review contract activity, I open it up, there is the page for the review contract where I can see the file created by the service task, which is the document of the contract with some information, the product chosen, the price. And if you look at the end, there is the space where the signatures will be applied once the customer accepts the contract. I can decide whether to accept the contract or not. Let's state that I accept it and I will be redirected to the other page about the sign of the contract, where I can see the contract, which is basically the same document, but I can design here my signature. If I press finish, then the business logic that uh, applies the signature is executed. It takes a while since uh, it uses also crypt cryptography to create a, a real digital signature. And if the procedure ends successfully, we will see back the dashboard of the customer and we will receive also an email uh, that contains the new document contains the new document uh with the signatures so let's go to the end of the document and as you can see both signatures have been applied this completes my presentation about the business process automation in vibration 9 i give the word back to roberto for the questions so very nice Thank you, Michela, for this contribution. Um, we have received uh, some, uh, some questions, so I will spend a couple of minutes to, to answer. Uh, some questions are about um, timelines uh, of the release of Vibration 9. So first of all, this uh, BPA beta that you just seen is going to be available for, uh, for the beta program by the 18th of May. Um, 
the people that already have installed the uh, Vibration 9 beta will be notified inside the platform of the new update coming. Uh, those who have not yet enrolled in the program can do so by sending an email to uh, to bitprogram.com as you see in the presentation now. Uh, there's a question about when the general availability of the platform will be available. Uh, or we are planning to, to release uh, the um, Warbation 9 Community Edition by the end of June, more or less. So we are a little bit late, but we are, we are arriving. Uh, and in the following months, we will release also the Enterprise Edition, including uh, uh, the web platform, the mobile platform, and this BPA platform. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen the, um, the previous uh, webinars about uh, Webratio Mobile and, and Webratio Web Platform, uh, I think you can find them, uh, um, the video registration of the webinars on uh, our website and also on the YouTube channel of Webratio. Uh, so there was a question um, also about uh, what's, uh, what's unique in, in our platform. Well, um, well, a couple of things, but obviously one of the main characteristics of the platform is uh, is a low code um, attitude. So, uh, what makes very interesting the platform is that it's a low code platform. Uh, but uh, probably you know that the low code uh, uh, development platform uh, market is getting uh, quite uh, competitive in the last two or three years. What makes Webrace very unique, of course, is the speed of development. And you can find you can find some some numbers about that if you go on our website and you find uh, the low code the development white paper uh, with some number about uh, speed that has been measured by by our partners in using Vibratio. And uh, another characteristic characteristics that make us unique, as you have seen from the demo, is the ability to to model a user interface uh, uh, without coding. Uh, with a pixel quality um, UI, uh, pixel quality result. Uh, something that you haven't seen uh, today is that the, uh, uh, the overall code behind the solution is open. So, of course, you have the chance to, and also the platform is open, so you have the chance to uh, enhance and integrate the platform uh, with your custom logics and with your, with your custom UI widget, if you want. And uh, you, you can also have access to the code that the platform is producing. Uh, that is very open and standard based on, uh, on uh, Java technology on the back end uh, and uh, on uh, TypeScript uh, Angular technology on the front end, on the, say on the, on the client side, um, both for web and mobile uh, user interfaces. So let me see if there's something else in the question area. Yes, probably there are, but uh, uh, we, are, we are at the end of time. So I just have to, um, to ask to be so kind uh, to, uh, to fill our survey that will appear at the end of, um, of the webinar. So before logging out, uh, just wait a few seconds and uh, fill the session. Give give us your your feedback. For all the questions that we haven't able to to answer today, you will get an answer by email uh, in the next day. So thank you for participating, and I uh, hope to hear you soon. Bye bye.